Unless you guys are living under a rock, I can almost 1000% confirm that you've already heard about this case. And today we are going to go over all of the lies and inconsistent statements in the Johnny Depp vs. Amber Heard trial. And we need to discuss the madness, the cringe, the lies. This trial at the heart of it is a defamation case over a newspaper article that Amber Heard wrote in the Washington Post in 2018 claiming domestic violence, which basically alluded to Johnny Depp being the perpetrator. However, there is one huge issue, and that's that Johnny Depp claims that Amber's accusations are false. And not only are they false, but he claims that it was her who abused him and not the other way around. This case has intrigued the world, and it's the ultimate case of who done it, because their stories are so opposing. And basically, one of these two have to be lying. Now, I bet you guys anything that if Amber Heard and Johnny Depp could go back in time to this very moment, the moment on the set of their movie, The Rum Diary, this is where their relationship went from platonic to romantic, and supposedly, Everything changed. Bruce had asked me, he said he had been auditioning uh, this, this one particular actress named Amber Heard. Um, he said that he'd auditioned her five times. And he was, um, he wasn't sure about her capabilities um, as an actress with regard to the film and the character and what and taking direction and that sort of thing so he asked me if i would read with her for the uh, for the film and i had met already met a number of actresses and things and I, and so what i said to mr robinson is i said bruce i i, I don't if you if you've auditioned her five times you've seen the best and the worst, I suppose. So me putting her, this this girl in an uncomfortable situation, you know, saying, "Hey, all right, let's read this." I, I think is a, I think it's a, I think it's a far better idea that we just meet so that I can see how she behaves, um, see how she reacts because that's really all it is reaction behavior and you don't have to push anything else you know um so i they made an appointment uh she she came to my office i took one look at her and i thought yeah that's 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 the chenault that hunter wants that's the one I just, I thought, yeah, she could definitely kill me. That's, uh, that's what Hunter wants. And so we spoke and she was sweet as pie, pleasant, again, you know, um, intelligent, literate, very good taste. Um, um, and I felt like if she, what I felt and what I told Bruce was, look, when you put some, when you put someone in a situation that 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 they're obviously going to be feel under pressure, um, it's not the best way to to really to really know what they're capable of. And I made suggestions such as, um, and which I ended up making to Ms. Heard. I made suggestions of films that might give her. Uh, 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 some insight into what what we were looking for in terms of the film which is to say I gave her films like To Have and Have Not um, uh, and things of that nature be, 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 because I, I wanted to there was something very important that she I thought felt she needed to know about stillness as opposed to you know, uh, going broad or, or 
and uh, but 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 other than that, we didn't really um, have much interaction until um, until there was a um, a scene where I, I was t I'm, I'm taking a shower, and then she comes into the room and she walks, opens the shower, and we kiss. And uh, that moment was um, it was um, yeah it it, it, it was a, it was it, it felt like something um, it felt like something that I shouldn't be feeling because she had her wife. Um, and even though it was a scene and, and, and she had her wife and, and I had Vanessa and kitties and, um, yeah. It was a bit surreal, you know, uh, filming in a place like Puerto Rico, it was beautiful. Um, it takes place in the fifties. So everything really looked beautiful and, you know, cars and clothing, the music, it was just, it was a very colorful um, shoot in general. I, I, I couldn't have asked for, you know, a, a, a better scenario. I, I, I was on, on, on film. I mean, I was on set um, reading my books and every, occasionally Johnny would talk to me. And then he started to be really kind to me, um, like more open with me. Uh, when we'd have hot days filming, it, you know, there'd be this big SUV pull up and a security guard would kind of usher me into this car and it would have the AC blasting. And I'd be <laughs> sitting in the back of the SUV just thinking what a strange experience the whole thing was. And, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of interaction on set until... Um, until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We had a kissing scene and involved um, kissing. We had a kissing, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of interaction on set until, um, until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We had a kissing scene and, it didn't feel like a normal, it didn't feel like a normal scene anymore. It felt, a, it felt more real. There are certain things that you do in the job to um, be professional, like when you have to do that sort of scene and you don't like, you, <laughs> you don't use your tongue if you can, if you can avoid it. There's certain things that you do to just maintain a certain line. And it just felt like those lines were blurred. I mean, he grabbed my face and pulled me into him and really kissed me. Did, but we were filming a scene. Did he use his tongue? Yes. Okay. And it's so weird to think that if only Amber had decided not to take this role, or if Johnny had decided to work on any other project but this one. Wow, how different things would be. But it's not with Johnny Depp's legacy on the line, supposedly being shunned by movie execs and basically blacklisted from Hollywood. And Amber was as well. And if she had known her name would forever be synonymously tied to Amber Turd. Amber Turd, right? That is, an, that is another one. Amber Turd first appeared in 2016. Mr. Waldman's statement that made it any reference to Amber Turd, Amber Turd, Amber Turd, Amber Turd. I'm telling you guys, this was a match made in hell and they should have never gotten together. But thank God they didn't have any kids together because could you imagine the mess? But now here we are. It's already happened. We can't go back. We can't change it. They did the Rum Diaries and the hate between these two runs deep. Now, Amber claims that she just wants Johnny Depp to leave her alone. And Johnny refuses to look at her in the eye ever again. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? 
Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of Exhibit 1229. Um, no. Oh, no, a hug will save it all. All this, all this, everything you just I just wanted to touch you. Really, after all the shit you just said? I just wanted to give you a hug. After all the shit you fucking used me up and touched me? Please, please, stop Please, stop. Please, I just wanted to hug you and say bye. I didn't want to get in bed. We did that last night. It's fine. That was good enough. No, because I'm nothing to you. I will always be nothing to you. Come. Come. No, we're doing fucking hard. No, we'll never see each other again. Yeah. We won't even make Don't take my fucking glasses off. You don't like fucking looking at not my fucking eyes? You will not see my eyes again. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. Uh, yes, and got my TRO. Yeah. And he tells you, you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Ms. Heard? He can't. Now, I'm sure you guys heard that Johnny's nickname for Amber was at one point Slim. And in honor of her, he even got that name Slim tattooed on his fingers. Well, a few short years later, he changed the wording from Slim to Scum. And it just shows, in my opinion, how much these two cannot stand each other and how there really is such a fine and extremely thin line between love and hate. And I'm pretty sure they are way on the side of hate by now. And you guys, this trial has been absolutely insane. In this case, there have been a few breakout stars from the trial thus far. We have the vape guy. So the incident was May 21st, 2016. You saw her the night of May 25th. I remember, I was, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I remember, I gotta tell the whole story, how they got there. But before the guy, they went and get the keys, they come down, they say, somebody try to get into my unit, there's scratches on my door, say, and like, um, um, I'm really sorry, but who, will think it's gonna get into your unit because it's saw some scratches on the door, like, what, four inches above the door? Because the dog was scratching the door, was trying to get in, and they thought about someone trying to break into the, the, the unit. I said, on my head, I was like, Do you really you think someone's trying to get into your unit? There's scratches like four inches above your the floor and your door. That was the dog trying to get into the unit. They were so afraid. Oh, someone's trying to get into my unit. They're like, oh, come on, really? And I actually, when they asked me to go inside the unit just to check room by room to make sure that no one was there. So I did that as part of my job, make sure they're safe. But I like, really, I didn't understand why. All right, it's a good time to break for lunch. Uh, we'll just break a little early, so just don't talk to anybody, don't do any outside research, and we'll see you at two o'clock, okay? Thank you. Okay. 
We have Camille Vasquez, Johnny's angelic yet pit bullish lawyer. And it's like she's the perfect combination of sweet and savage. I've never seen anything like it. Miss Vasquez, do you want me to close the shades? That would be okay. <laughs> Just, there's this light coming across. <laughs> so I appreciate that. It's probably comfort. good light. And we have Elaine, who is the extremely incompetent and seemingly dotish counsel for Amber Heard. And I don't think I've seen as many objections in quick succession as I have with her. And hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, it's prior consistent statements. It's, it's leading. It's my Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach? That's fine. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Oh, Calls man. for hearsay. Yes. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. They're suggesting. Objection, Your Honor, can we approach? This is again an approach. Objection, correct? leading. Objection, leading. Objection, leading. Calls. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. Why is objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Damage. All right. I'll when there's objection, please stop. Is that true? Or objection, false? Your Honor, leading. Your Honor, she, and she absolutely. So it's, it's leading. Maybe objection, maybe Your Honor, lack of foundation. Relating to your notes. Objection, leading. Sustained. What, I foundation, said, what hearsay. What, what if anything? It's not the cure all, it's sustained. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Objection, Give Your Honor, me. lack of foundation. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation calls for speculation. Do you recall? <sighs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Um, I'm going to object to the. Tissue. I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay, and lack of foundation. O overruled. An improper expert opinion. No. Objection, Your Honor. Objection, leading. What if anything? And that does cure. No, it doesn't. But oh, I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Call objection, Your question. Honor, leading. I'm entitled to go into what Ms. Vasquez. Said. Is objection is leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Objection, leading and hearsay. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross examination. It's prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection. It's observation is for the 1217, the same day. Sustain the objection. Objection, lack of foundation. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay, Your Honor. Leading. Calls for speculation. It's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Even this guy couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity. seem pissed at her lack of representation. I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Right. Ma'am, you can have a seat next to your attorney, okay? You can, you can go ahead and seat next to her. That's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? All right, is, is your next witness a live witness, remote no, witness, or deposition? deposition? Deposition, all right, so we'll get the TV set up for that. We have people bringing in alpacas outside of the courthouse. Why? All because Johnny Depp's infamous quote during court. Mr. Depp, if Disney came to you with $300 million and a million alpacas, nothing on this earth would get you to go back and work with Disney on a Pirates of the Caribbean film. That is true, Mr. Robinborn. So that was a little bit of the funny and cringy, but now we need to go over 
all of the inconsistencies and all of the lies that have occurred in this courtroom. And here's the thing, guys. This is a hard case, one where there is no perfect person. Both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are extremely flawed and tortured individuals. They each have serious issues. And I've heard from so many of you that are survivors of DV and who've experienced DV are advocates for victims, yet your gut is telling you, not all of you, but some of you, that Amber's story just does not make sense, that it doesn't add up, and that it's not believable. And one of the biggest reasons her story does not just quite seem to add up was the unbelievable cross-examination by Johnny Depp's lawyer, Camille Vasquez. There were other statements in Amber's testimony that came back and showed that they were extremely inaccurate. First and foremost, let's talk about two major errors in regards to dates. For starters, Amber's claim about her bruise kit. Now, Elaine, Amber's lawyer, claims that Amber used this specific Milani cosmetic product during her entire relationship with Johnny Depp. Now, you also heard them say that all kinds of people saw Amber that week and she didn't, uh, she didn't have any bruises on her face. Well, let me show you this. This is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny Depp. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Do you think that she ever would have wanted other people to see her bruises and her cuts? This was what she used. She became very adept at it. You're going to hear the testimony from Amber about how she had to mix the different colors for the different days of the bruises as they were as they developed in the different coloring and how she would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those. She also used concealer, foundation. You'll hear from a makeup uh, person that Amber didn't even leave her bedroom without having foundation on. And one of the people that was at the building testified. He said she had makeup on and it would have covered that purse. So that's, that's the testimony on that. Now, let me talk about the divorce just for a moment. Now, while Amber's attorney did not specifically name Milani Cosmetics in court, she held up the makeup kit and said that Amber carried the product every day and used it to hide her bruises. Now, here's the problem. That product was specifically the Milani All-in-One Correcting Kit, and it was not launched until 2017. The company itself posted a video explaining the makeup kit would not have been available before 2017. And just remember, Amber filed for divorce from Johnny in May of 2016, still one year before the correction kit was even launched or even available for purchase. So devil's advocate and response from Amber's legal team is that the product that was held up was not actually the real makeup palette in question. It was just used for reference. But let's go back to Eileen's words one more time because that is not at all what she said or what she represented. And as we know, lawyers are very calculating they're very careful with their words because every word matters. And I find it very hard to believe that this was an error. But moving on, we have to discuss how Amber had to walk back her statement about the first time that she was ever abused by Johnny Depp. Amber, when did the first act of physical violence by Mr. Depp occur? Objection, Allison answered. No, overruled. It would have been early 2012. And how did you determine this? I reviewed my therapist. Objection, notes. hearsay. I, 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 she hasn't even answered it, Your Honor. All right, I'll allow the answer. By reviewing my therapist's notes. Objection, right. hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor, but it's not offered to prove the truth I'll of the matter asserted. It's, it's explaining what she looked at. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, 
when we believed um, up until recently that it was, it had started later, um, that the violence started around early 2013, not early 2012. Now, you testified earlier that the first act of physical violence by Mr. Depp related to the Winona Wino tattoo. Do you recall that testimony? I do. Okay. Is that, does that change your testimony realizing that this is earlier? Was this in fact still the, the first act? Objection leading. Uh, sustained. What was, the, what was the first act? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Um, how do you remember the first act of violence? Uh, well, you never forget it. That's how I remember it. It changes your life forever. You never forget the first time someone hits you like that. I just had the date wrong. And how do how is it that you think you got the date wrong? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. Um. I'm embarrassed to say, I think I would have liked to have believed that the period of time in which I had to fall in love with Johnny, I, I wasn't hit so early in the relationship and still stayed. He was also sober for a period in 2012, which was a peaceful time for us in which we fell in love. So I had kind of allowed myself, I guess, uh, to forget that the beginning of that period, 2012, before he got sober was, was really violent and chaotic as well. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that. Now she's already said that you never forget the first time that an abuse incident happens. But she got the year wrong, you guys. And to me, she just seemed super, super nervous right before she was getting on the stand. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the footage of her right before the jury came in it was like she was mentally preparing for what was about to come. She first had to admit her mistake. So true, maybe she was just nervous about being challenged by the other side, but it's still just food for thought, you guys. And now we need to discuss some straight up untruths. And let's not forget that when she said that she has never, ever played the guitar. And what does this depict? Um, blood on one of the guitars um, that Johnny was apparently trying to play. Okay. Then you didn't try to play the guitar. Objection, Your Honor. What Call for any... speculation. I didn't even get the words at this point. Next, your question. Okay. okay. What if any effort did you make to make to play a guitar? <laughs> I've never played the guitar. 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 Okay. And let's not forget the statement about the doctor. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries, is there, Ms. Hurd? I didn't seek treatment. And the day after you sustained all these injuries, Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia, right? Well, he came the third day uh, along with security. The day after you sustained these injuries, Ms. Dr. David Kipper came along with Nurse Debbie Lloyd, correct? Well, the f that fight went into the morning, like early hour morning, so technically that last day. Dr. David Kipper is Mr. Depp's, or was Mr. Depp's uh, physician, right? I believe he still is. But yes. he was at the time. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician, correct, Mr. Hurd? Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right. Let's please pull up. Do you remember giving testimony in this case in a deposition, Ms. Heard? Yes, I do. I've given a couple. If we could please uh, pull up the deposition transcript, uh, day two. Um, at 589 lines six through eight. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, Your Honor, we're going to play Ms. Hurd's deposition for the jury. Uh, line day two, page 540, line six through nine. We have permission to publish it. You gotta give me Excuse me, I, I'm sorry. Day two, page 589, line six through eight. All right, could we just give us a minute to get Of course. There? 589. I'm sorry, what were the lines? Page 589, line six through eight. Did you say 540 or 589? 589, uh -huh. lines six right. through eight. All right, thank okay. you. That's thank fine. you. I have no objection, Your Honor. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. And basically, to me, her statement showed that she was just trying to say, well, he's just a paid employee that will just do whatever Johnny Depp says. And of course, let's not forget that PR stunt from the Dutch TV show RTL Late Night. And this is where Amber made the public statement that she, in fact, had already donated $7 million to charity. You stated you would be donating half of the $7 million to the ACLU. That's correct. And you would be donating the other half to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That's correct. And you also stated, with respect to the $7 million divorce settlement, that money played no role except for the extent that you could donate the money to charity. Yes, that's correct. This is an article entitled, Amber Heard Donates Johnny Depp Divorce Settlement to Charity. The statement reads, as described in the restraining order and divorce settlement, money played no role for me personally and never has, except to the extent that I could donate it to charity and in doing so, hopefully help those less able to defend themselves. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million and $7 million is being donated. This is over and above any funds that I have given away in the past and will continue to give away in the future. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. I don't remember that last line, but I have no, it doesn't stand out to me as wrong. There's nothing inaccurate in the statement. Not that I recognize, no. Mr. Depp donated $100,000 of the divorce settlement directly to the ACLU, is that right? Right at the beginning of the divorce settlement, he um, donated 100000 to each charity on my behalf or towards my contribution. So $100,000 to each to the ACLU and to the Children's Hospital. And in response, you publicly demanded that Mr. Depp pay the divorce settlement directly to you instead of the charities, right? That was always the agreement actually is for him to pay me directly. It was not his money as per the settlement agreement to give away and reap a tax benefit from. I said, if he wants to do it and give to charity all of a sudden, then he should pay the correct amount and not try to get a big tax break for it. So effectively for his tax bracket, he should be paying double that amount to the charity directly. And if he wanted to pay the charity directly, he could. He could do that was fine with me, but he would need to pay the adjusted amount. Ultimately, the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement was paid directly to you, right? Over time, yes. And Mr. Depp didn't end up paying the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement directly to the charities you identified. That is correct. He paid them you, installments to me. You stopped that from happening, didn't you? I don't understand what your question is. I'm sorry. You stopped Mr. Depp from paying the charities that you had named directly. That is incorrect. I said, if you want to pay the charities directly, pay the adjusted amount or pay as per our agreement in the settlement or in the divorce as per our agreement. You also and he chose to do the former, not the latter. I mean, the other way around. You also publicly stated that the $7 million divorce settlement should be paid to the charities immediately in full, right? If he wanted to pay it in the way that he was suggesting, yes. And, and you said publicly that the payments to the charities should not be drawn out over many years, right? I said that, I don't, I don't recall the exact words that I used, but basically that he shouldn't use this as an, a novel interest in getting a tax break, that if he wanted to do that and not pay me the settlement, 
that was fine, but he would have to pay the adjusted amount and not make it, you know, a, a commitment he would not fulfill or try to avoid in some other way. And that's because you wanted the entire world to think that you were donating every penny of the $7 million divorce settlement as soon as you received it from Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? No, I was going to be receiving it in installments and I would be paying in installments the donations. In fact, you released a statement in response to Mr. Depp's $100,000 donations to the ACLU and CHLA, didn't you? I don't recall. Let's see if we can refresh your recollection. You released a statement after Mr. Depp donated $100,000 to the ACLU and $100,000 to CHLA. Correct, Ms. Hurd? I think so, yes. Okay. And the language that follows is the statement you released in response to Mr. Depp's donations, right? I don't know if this is this the official statement. I really, I have no idea. The statement that reads, the statement reads, Amber Heard appreciates Johnny Depp's novel interest in supporting two of her favorite charities, the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union for Domestic Violence, and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. This is great and unexpected news. And it continues. However, if Johnny wishes to change the settlement agreement, we must insist that he honor the full amount by donating $14 million to charity, which after accounting for his tax deduction is equal to his $7 million payment obligation to Amber. And it continues. We would also insist that the full amount be paid immediately and not drawn out over many years. Anything less would be a transparent attempt by Johnny's counsel, Laura Wasser and Patty Glazer to reduce their client's true payment by half under the guise of newfound concern for charities that he has never previously supported, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Thank you. After this, you kept commenting about the donation of your divorce settlement, right? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. You spoke about donating your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show, correct? Uh, I believe I said I had, um, I, I believe I said I donated it to charity, but it was already printed or already commented on and stated in the press. I had already released that information in the press. I think I just confirmed it on that show. You appeared on a show called RTL Late Night, right? I don't recall it, what show it was. If we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 346, which is a portion of your appearance on this program. And we would ask that it be moved into evidence and it, ask for permission to publish it. It contains, it has hearsay, it contains other communications with other individuals. Human rights organizations. Sorry, ACLU. Is you said all this and then there was a divorce. Seven million dollars in total was donated to. I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU is a prominent um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union, and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and the legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never. I wanted of, uh, nothing. Two, I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote. That's, right? that's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million dollars settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the settlement, Hurd, $7 that, million to question. charity, and I, I Hurd, intend to fulfill Hurd, those obligations. Hurd, that's not my question. Please what was try to question? answer my question. Sitting here today, 
you have not donated the $7 million donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They but I the don't. Ms. Heard, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Ms. Heard, respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, correct? I have not yet. Johnny sued me. So as of today, you have not donated, paid $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those uh, those uh, obligations yet. And that's because you did want something, didn't you? I didn't want anything and I didn't get anything. You wanted Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. I loved Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted praise for donating the money, right? That's incorrect. You wanted good press. In general, one <laughs> does want good press, yes. You wanted to seem altruistic publicly. Wasn't my interest. Um, my interest is uh, in my name and clearing my name. And at the time I was being called a liar and my motives were being questioned. I did see it as important to clear that up. I wanted to make a statement to make sure that there was not any doubt that I couldn't be labeled these things just because Johnny was a bigger star and had more publicity reach. You wanted to remind everyone of your claims of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? No, I wanted to move on with my life. You wanted to make those claims seem believable. They are believable. They you were You wanted believable. them to be seen. You wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you, I ever called myself one. You testified under oath that, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote, didn't you? That's correct. I pledged the entirety. No. Ms. Heard, my questions. Your counsel will have time to redirect you after. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That is correct. I pledged the entirety. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. Uh, all right. Ms. Hurt, this is really yeah. inappropriate. I, I'll sustain the objection and we'll just move forward. Thank Let's you. Let's move forward. Next Thank question. You. Under oath, that statement wasn't true, was it, Ms. Hurd? I'm sorry, I don't follow your question. Sorry. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of my divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That statement wasn't true. It is true. I pledged the entirety to charity. The statement. When you say you buy a house, you don't pay Ms. for Heard, the entire house Heard, at one time. You pay it I'm over not asking, time. Ms. Heard. All right. Next question, please. Thank you. That statement isn't true today, as you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety. But you didn't charity. donate it. Unfortunately, you didn't donate. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate. I mean, to fulfill those. So that's a no, right, Ms. Heard? I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the $7 million for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct? Ms. I Hart? disagree with your characterization of that. And I don't know you guys, but the fact that she thinks that the word donate and pledge are synonymous and she never walked it back. The audacity, you guys. It's okay to make a mistake. You just need to admit it. And if I was a juror, she would have lost huge credibility points with me. Huge. I'm telling you, you guys, the inconsistent statements keep on coming. Also, one of the most inconsistent statements came from some of the photos taken of Amber. And one of the photos looks suspiciously like a saturated photo and it appears worse 
than it actually was? Let's go to May of 2016. Uh, yesterday, Ms. Hurd, uh, Ms. Bredehoff, your attorney, showed you certain pictures um, from May 21, 2016. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. We could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 710, which has already been admitted in, into evidence. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, we could please do a split screen, Tom, and also pull up Defendant's Exhibit 714, which has already been admitted with redactions. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph that was also taken on May 21st, 2016, correct? Yes, although the one to the right might have been taken the next uh, day. I can't be sure. The reason I say that is because there's light in the background. So it looks like it was taken in the daytime, which means maybe it was the next day. Didn't you testify that you uh, took different lighting pictures in different lightings on May 21? That is correct, yes. And, and you're wearing two thin necklaces in this picture on the right. Is that correct? That is correct. And you testified that these pictures were taken the same night the one on the right looks like it was taken in the daytime because I can see the daylight behind me but you testify that they were taken the same day uh, I don't know if I I think I testified that they came from the same incident of the same day not necessarily taken on the same day okay. let's please pull up defendants exhibit 712 which has already been admitted Uh, you testified yesterday, this is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, can we please do a split screen and also pull up defendant 713, which has already been admitted. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday, this is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on on both of these pictures, though. Isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on. And then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited a photograph. Didn't you just enhance the saturation for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Then the zinger for me was when Amber said that one photo was taken with the light on while the other was taken with the light off. And as you can see... There's light bulbs in both photos. In both photos, the lights are turned on. And of course, we need to talk about the inconsistent statement about if Amber or her team I wanted to find out online if I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. You slipped up there, didn't you, Ms. Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. The copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way, for years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. 
What extraordinary. And discuss things more real time in my private Discord. So please consider joining my channel membership for access. I am dying to know your thoughts and opinions on the flat out lies and inconsistent statements. So did I miss any? If I did, be sure to add them below and share in the comment section so, so that we can all get up to date. Hopefully I'll see you in my private Discord server. If not, I'll see you in the next video.